It's that time of the year. iOS 16, iPadOS 16, they've all been officially announced. So that means I am in full research mode now and I am working on OS walkthrough videos for September. These are, these are the videos I do every year that just take up a ton of time because I put a ton of time into research, gathering up ideas, living and breathing in these OSs, just making sure I know how all the ins and outs work, what's changed. I wanted to make a video talking talking about my research process, the apps I use, how I kind of gather all this information, either from different sources or like as I go through and like find stuff in the OS, you know, and make notes and stuff like that. Now, during this time period where, you know, we're in the betas for the next major OS updates, I always switch back to the built-in Apple productivity apps. So reminders, notes, calendars, those apps right there, I, typically prefer third-party apps just because I think there's a lot of really good third-party apps out there that do really interesting things. But over the years, I've heard from you all a lot that a lot of you like the first-party Apple stuff. Uh, so I want to make sure I am using them at least for a good chunk of the year so that way I can talk about them, you know, tell you what's new, the best way to use them, things like that. So um, you're going to see me talk about notes a lot in this video, but also a bunch of other third-party apps as well. This video is sponsored by Morning Brew. Morning Brew is a free newsletter that is sent to you daily that has thought-provoking articles in it. Before getting started with Morning Brew, I was really just focused on my tech bubble, you know, what's going on with Apple and apps and stuff like that. I really wasn't focused on the world at large when it came to news. Ever since I've been getting Morning Brew, I've been getting world news, business, finance, all sorts of really interesting stuff that I wouldn't have sought out on my own, and it's definitely not stuff that I would have gotten from the websites that I typically follow. So while there is all of that business and finance and world news that's, that is interesting, there's also tech stuff too that I'm, you know, as you can all tell, I'm really interested in. In fact, earlier this week, there was an article in Morning Brew about a Google language model maybe being sentient. Now, I'm just gonna say up front, I don't think it's sentient. In fact, there's a lot of evidence in the article that points otherwise and, and even Google's like, no, it's not sentient. But it was a really interesting story. But what I liked about it is it made me think about, hey, in the future, when there is AI and AI sentience, how will people and AI work together? Now, I don't think it's going to be a Terminator thing, but I, I am very curious about that future. That that kind of stuff like really gets my brain going. And honestly, it's not something I would have seen without Morning Brew. Morning Brew is completely free to sign up and it only takes 15 seconds. I'll put a link to where you can sign up in the description below. So go check it out. I don't know about you, but I spend a ton of time doing research for all of my various projects. And there's a few different apps and services I use for this. So one of the big key things is RSS. Now you're like, what RSS died back when Google Reader got shut down? It did not, but it almost did. There are a lot of really great RSS services out there. There are free ones, there are paid ones. Um, Feedly is a free one, uh, but I use one called Feedbin. Now Feedbin is a paid for service, but and I've tried just about every RSS service out there and I always come back to this one for one particular reason. Not only does it do RSS and it does a really good job at like organizing your RSS into different bins and it's really fast when it comes to syncing. Not all RSS readers and services are fast when it comes to syncing, but it also has a newsletter feature. So when you sign up for newsletters, instead of putting your personal email address in there or your work one or whatever, you get an email address from Feedbin that you can paste into the sign up, and all those newsletters will then go to your RSS reader instead of your inbox. And if you're like me, you get a lot of emails, you don't want more stuff cluttering up your inbox. So I really like that. Like that just sets the service apart for me. And I wouldn't consider any other service until that another service has that feature. Now Feedbin is just the service I use to basically gather up all those RSS feeds. Now you can use it to read through stuff. Absolutely not a problem, but I like to use the app reader. Now in the past, I've talked about net newswire a lot, and I do still think it's a great RSS uh, reader. In fact, one of the things I like about it more than reader is it's gesture support. So on the iPad and iPhone, you can swipe left and right to go next on reader. You have to like sw scroll to the bottom of the article and like swipe up. So if it's something I don't want to read in net newswire, I can just swipe right past it. 
with Reader, you have to kind of go all the way up. I, I, I really wish I could change that. But Reader it has a great design. It, it looks amazing. But there's one feature it has that I... As soon as I found out about this, I, I kind of fell in love with it and I want it everywhere. And it's called Bionic Reading. Now, I don't think this is gonna show up very well in video. I, I will try my best, but I'll put a link to everything I talk about, including this in the description below. So you can go to a website and you can kind of see what it is for yourself because it, it's kind of hard to explain. You really have to try it out. But basically what it does is it bolds some parts of the word and doesn't bold, like it makes it regular for other parts of the word. And a way for your brain to help read a sentence with and like keep it coherent. So if you're like me, a lot of times I have to reread things multiple times to kind of like grasp it. It's just my ADHD brain, like it just does not, does not want me to read something. With bionic reading, I can like just read something one time all the way through and I get it. Like it's so, I, I don't understand the science behind it, but I can tell the difference between when it's on and off. And I've sat there and toggled it on and off and I'm like, okay, there, there clearly is a difference. So uh, I highly recommend, go check out the website. There's a bunch of apps that hook into it. There's a Chrome extension and there's also an API if you're developing an app. Like I said, it just helps me read and understand things without having to go back and reread stuff multiple times, which is never fun. Like nobody wants to do that. Uh, unfortunately though, not all websites publish their full blog posts or articles at, to their RSS readers. So, you know, a lot of big news sites and stuff like that, like they don't publish it. So Bionic Reading kind of, that's where it kind of falls down. Um, that's where like the Chrome extension would come in handy and stuff like that, but I don't use Chrome, so. Another great source of information is Twitter. Twitter, you can get out of it what you put into it. So I really curate heavily who I follow. Uh, and that is because I don't want a lot of, you know, junk in the timeline. I don't, I especially don't want politics or anything like that. I just, I don't, I don't want to deal with any of that stuff. I don't like it. I don't want to deal with it. Uh, so because of that, I stopped using the first party Twitter client because as you've probably of all seen when like somebody you follow likes a tweet or like it'll show tweets hey here's a tweet from somebody that you follow that they follow or it's like i don't care about any of this stuff so i use the app tweetbot tweetbot is a third party twitter client and what's nice about it is you get chronological timeline you only see stuff from people you follow and you know maybe if the you, somebody you follow retweets something you will obviously see that but you you don't see like hey this person liked this tweet like you don't see any of that and that's really nice uh chronological timeline and also has timeline syncing between devices so between my ipad my iphone and even the mac there's timeline syncing so i i don't have to like remember where i was or anything like that which is really handy for me right now so i use twitter to keep up with developers and see what they're working on with their apps you know what new features and stuff like that i want to cover here on the channel so as I see stuff in Twitter, I will save it for later and I'll, I'll talk about the app that I use, I, I send tweets to in just a second, but I'll save tweets for later, check them out. Now, if you're somebody that works in other fields, like obviously this isn't just for YouTube and stuff like that, you curate who you follow and then you'll get out of it what you put into it, like I said. So I mentioned uh, I, I save stuff for later. So whether it's an art, an article from Reader and my RSS Reader or a tweet or something like that or something I just found on the web, a product, an app I found in the App Store, whatever, I use the app Good Links and I send all of these links to Good Links. This works for anything with a URL. It's really nice. So as I add stuff, I use tags to organize it. So for right now, for the beta period, I use the tag 2022 beta, or uh, if there's like a hardware product I really want to like check out in the future, I use the product tag, or if there's an app, I use the tag app, so on. I honestly think I've tried every read it later app there is on the app store and there isn't one that does exactly what I want. And Good Links isn't perfect, but it's the closest I've found to what I want. Uh, it really what I want is just like some kind of like standalone bookmark manager that does a really nice job of laying things out. Give me some sort of auto tagging option and quick entry and all that stuff. But for now, Good Links works. And 
what I'll do is, you know, throughout the day or as I finish up with RSS readers or I'm doing research or something like that, I will go through good links and check things out and see the stuff that I save for later. That's where tags really come in handy. So if I'm just focused on like iPad OS 16, I can click on that 2022 beta tag and I can just focus on the iPad OS 16 stuff. Good Links also has really good search, a uh, nice read mode. Uh, it, it has a ton of settings, so like you can set it up to where it automatically marks articles as read or opens them in Safari or the whatever default browser you use. Um, I just like using a Read It Later app instead of leaving tabs open or even using tab groups because I don't have to fear about like, oh, I accidentally closed this tab because I am relentless about closing tabs. I will just sit there and hit Command W, even though I shouldn't, I'm just like, I've got 50 tabs open, it's time to close all these and I'll just be Command W, Command W all the way through. Uh, so having a Read It Later app and those links sent there, I know I won't lose them. Okay, so having all of this information is great, but what do you do with it? Like I talked about, I'm using the Notes app right now. And Notes is a really good note-taking app if you want rich text and nice formatting, the ability to like drag and drop images in there or links and kind of get like a nice preview of them. Um, it's, it's a really good app for this kind of thing. For example, like right now, I'm obviously focused on iPad OS 16 and iOS 16. So I have a big document that has stuff I need to test and check out, uh, feedback I need to file, like, so uh, feedback for those that don't know, if you're on the betas, there's an app called Feedback. That's where you file bug reports and suggestions and things like that. And then all the notes for all the stuff that I found that's new or changed or whatever, uh, that's where all this stuff goes. So it's really handy to kind of like have all this in one place. As I'm using iPad OS 16 throughout the summer, I just, and I find something new, I just add it to this document. Then when it comes time to write the script, what I do is I sit here with notes and mind note, and I write out a mind map of like all the top sections. And then what I can do with mind note is I can rearrange everything so everything is in order properly. And I can reference back notes and like, hey, here's all the top headings and here's the subheadings and stuff for, you know, the script. And then I can export that as a markdown document into uh, my text editor, but that's a video for another time. But what I like about notes, like I mentioned, you can just drag and drop links in, images, you can drag in PDF documents, whatever you need as a reference material, notes does a really good job with it. You can mix handwriting notes and type notes now. Uh, it does a really good job of kind of like blending all of that stuff together. Last year, a feature got added to iPadOS 15 and macOS Monterey uh, called Quick Note. So there's a few different ways you can trigger this. Uh, on the iPad, you can swipe up from the bottom right corner. You can trigger it from Control Center. Or my personal favorite, you hit the Globe Q keyboard shortcut. And this gives you a little popover window. You can quickly tape, type a note out, you know, whatever, you know, pops up. I use this a lot for like, oh, hey, this is new in iPadOS, Globe Q type in the feature, close it, and then later on I can add it to my big overall document. That way I don't have to like stop whatever I'm in the middle of, go to my notes document, find that note, scroll to the right section, type the thing, and then get back to working. It's just globe Q, type it, then dismiss it. It's it's really nice, it'll be saved there for later. But what's also cool about Quick Note, let's say you have a PDF document open or a website or an email or something. When you trigger Quick Note, you will see an option that kind of gives a name or a description of whatever that is and then an add button. You can tap that and it'll add a link to that. Then you can hand, you know, write in whatever note you want. And then when you come back to that Quick Note, you can tap on that and it'll launch right to that website, PDF document, email, whatever. There's a whole bunch of different things that you could do with it. Really, really awesome. It's just a killer feature. Uh, I really wish QuickNote would be open up to third parties so like it wasn't just stuck to sending stuff to the Notes app. You know, give me the ability to send it to Drafts or Bear or whatever third party. But uh, it is just limited to the Apple Notes app uh, and that is a big reason to use the Apple Notes app. And at WWDC this year, it was announced that Quick Note is also coming to iOS 16, so it'll be on the iPhone as well. If you're doing anything research related, I highly recommend using the Apple Notes app to kind of gather your thoughts, whether you're using the Apple Pencil to handwrite things out or a keyboard to type things out. It, it works really well. 
So these are the apps and processes I'm using for research and note taking. Let me know what you guys are using in the comments below. I'm always on the lookout for new apps. My thanks to Morning Brew for sponsoring this video. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.